What's happening, Dan? Oh, just a whole bunch of things. Oh. Really getting interesting, isn't it? It is, yeah. Hey. Well, people that have eyes to see mm-hmm. and ears to hear, oh, I bet they're really, uh, they're really thinking. Yes, yes. They're getting away with a lot of stuff. There's a lot of information to be accessed, and uh, they seem to be pretty overwhelmed by it. Well, yeah, you're right. It's information overload. Mm -hmm. When you walk up to somebody that, you know, seems to be in a dream world, they're buying some kind of a seasonal decoration for something or other, and they don't realize that what they're doing is idolatry, how about those people that go to Rome and they visit the Vatican and they go out there and look at that big dome and they have no idea. And that and well, there's something else out there that's poking up in the world. Uh, what is that thing? It's like a 41-foot obelisk yeah. sitting on a pedestal. It's a pillar. Pillar. Obelisk, yeah. yeah. Something that we're told not to erect, not to build those things. Yes, and they don't know what they are. They just think mm-hmm. they're special, and they go, "Oh, I've seen those things in graveyards and crosses." They're filling the graveyards too, you know. And they're very similar objects too. Oh yeah. Well, you know, um, the thing about this day and age that we live in is people are so occupied with. Uh, mm-hmm life. They don't have any time to think and to study things. And if they did, if they start looking at the origins of these things, they would see where they really come from right. and what they really mean. <coughs> but there's just, you know, people are, are just kept so busy with everything. And, you know, with the electronic age that we live in, mm-hmm. you know, everything's got to be faster and faster and, mm-hmm. you know, occupy your time. Um, it's just really a big mess, and people don't have the time, basically, to even look into any of this stuff. Everybody's we're not being told, we're not being told everybody but their teachers, because, well, we can't have that, can we? Everyone's looking at their cell phone. And right, right. Running into the people, yeah. Mm-hmm. Falling off cliffs and ramming yeah. into dump trucks and cement mixers. Mm-hmm. Um, or just flying off the road. They, they just can't stop. Yeah. How many people have died without real wisdom? Yeah. They're very smart people. See, I'm not going to memorize these. I'm, I'm just, I might remember the petabyte. And I tell you what, if you don't know what the, what the next level above terabyte is, you're petabyte Yeah. <laughs> well. You know, I, I got two words for all that. What? Mental. Clutter. Mental clutter. That's it. Well, I want to clutter my mind with what the kings were told to write down and carry with them and read every day. Deuteronomy yeah. 17 orders the kings and rulers to carry this with them. I think I'll put this in my wallet. Hey, you know, we should be, we should have the Ten Commandments with us. Not only in our heart, but, you know, the, the love of them. But we should have them so that we can hand them to somebody and go, you know what, I think you need to read these. All the kings are supposed to have them. But do you think they do? I mean, the presidents and the kings and the, and the princes and the nobles, or the pope, you think the pope's carrying these? No. The patriarch of the Eastern Orthodox Circus? No, because they never talk about them. No, never. They think that's uh, done away. I mean, it's like they treat them like a credit card. What good is it if you don't take it out of your wallet? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. I don't like credit cards. I don't either. No. They're too easy to use and... (laughs) When the surprise comes in the mail, you're not ready for it. Yeah. But you know, 
the Ten Commandments, they're, they're so simple. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Christians aren't being taught that uh, they need to write these, write these down, write them in their minds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yahushua said that, you know, I will write my Torah on their heart. That's the new covenant. Mm-hmm. But how many people have hearts that are willing to, you know, have the big eraser put to them and make room to write these Ten Commandments? You know, get rid of all the nonsense. Yeah, I, I think about them every day. And, and, uh, and how many, you know, how many people can actually recite them oh. in order? Yeah. I, I haven't met any Christian that can. I don't think that there's uh, any Christian pastors that can. Not typically. Yeah. They might be able to get get most of them in 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 a in a out of order, but they don't really think about them. It's a covenant of love. I'm going to hold it up to the camera here. Let them see the short versions and let them get the ten of them there. You can slow this down and read it. The first four deal with our relationship with Yahuwah. And the last six, how to get along with your neighbor. Well, you know, the last six are, are the ones that basically, people in general, uh, don't really have a problem with those. Mm-hmm. But the first four, that's when they really start getting divisive. And that's when the name calling starts, and the, and the no name calling, for that matter. Yeah, it's, uh, mm-hmm. that's pretty sad. Yeah, I love them. No, I do too. Yeah. And here's the thing if you get the first four right and you practice them, the last six are going to fall into place. Yeah. They don't really know what the first four are. No, we have a watered-down version that's been written by the yeah. Catholic Church. And they removed the name. Mm-hmm. Substituted it. Yeah. <coughs> and then they all, the fourth one, you know, about the Sabbath. Yeah. Um, the ones that are actually going to a meeting house on the Sabbath, they're not really observing the Sabbath. I mean, the way it's supposed to be observed. Yeah. They're supposed to stay in their place and rest on that day. I mean, you know, I, I always ask this, this a simple question. You know, if you're driving six days a week, how are you resting? And then you get to the seventh day of the week and you're driving again. Where exactly is your rest? And I, you know, and I mean physical rest. Where, where is that? And the other thing, too, is when you're out on the road, <laughs> it's dangerous out there. Oh, boy, what yeah. If, you know, what if you have a problem with your with your chariot, okay, and like you get to call for assistance, then you're calling someone and causing them to work on your behalf yeah. on that day. And anyway you cut it, it's, it's just not right. So if you stay in your place and do what the command says, then you're not breaking it. You can sleep all day and it doesn't break it. But some people take real issue with that when you try talking to them. I know I have in the past to try talking to Sabbath keepers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want to hear that. Oh, that was uh, that, that's uh, rabbinical Judaism. Yeah. yeah. Well, the uh, the second commandment. Well, the first commandment <coughs> is, "I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Have no other before my face." Number two is, "You do not bow to images." Now, he's not really talking about don't watch TV. Or no. have a picture of your dad or mom on your wall. He's not talking about that. He's talking about mm-hmm. bowing to images that you hold dear. One of the things that we have to remember is Yahushua said, I think it was uh, Luke 16, right, right around 14 and 15, that that which is highly thought of among men is an abomination to Yahuwah. So you're dad and mom's picture on the wall is not highly thought of among men 
it's it's the stuff that they go visit you know like the Vatican they go and visit this thing I'm gonna I'm gonna put a picture uh, up here so that you can see what they're what they're looking at and this article has a picture on the back of it showing the thing and the article the, it's a four page track and I think I might you might have received one today Dan it's called yep, Cali yep. Caligula's Obelisk. That's right. Caligula, who was that? Third Caesar. He was the third Kaiser. There was Augustus. And then there was a, a second Caesar who was, uh, I think, uh, Ty Tiberius. And he's mentioned in Scripture. And then uh, Caligula was actually a contemporary of Yahusha himself. He, he was a young boy, of course, at that time, but he lived a short life. He was only Caesar for th four years, a little shy of four years. And uh, Yahusha was uh, alive while Caligula was a younger boy. And uh, <clears throat> after, let's see, who was... Who was Caesar while Yahushua was alive? Claudius? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Paul mentioned Claudius, or Luke wrote, wrote about Claudius in the book of Acts mm -hmm. when, he, when he ran into the, the couple that had just get, gotten ejected from Rome. And... Uh, they said, hey, Claudius is, you know, caused all of us to leave. He threw us out of Rome. Well, that was kind, but, you know, Caligula was a pretty mean guy. In the gladiator games, he would, uh, just out of boredom, have the soldiers take a section of the people, the common people that were there to view, to throw them into the arena and then release lions against them, and they would all get eaten. It's a, a craziness. Uh, something happened to him, you know. He was touched. Yeah, he got he got possessed, I believe. You know. Yeah, that sure sounds like it. Yeah, that's and that's not the end of it. He was having all kinds of uh, people executed in the Senate. Senators just hey, you know, he looks dangerous. Let's take care of him. So they just uh, execute him. He was taken out by his own Praetorian guard. It's like uh, I know when I read this article, it, it, it brought back, you know, in my mind, uh, about the book of Daniel, when it talks about how Yahuwah uh, puts the lowest of men in charge of other people. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel 4, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, Daniel 4, yeah. And I mean, that's what we're witnessing today. I mean, you look around and government, and yeah. leaders, and, you know, the people that run everything, and their their mindset is very base. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all about themselves, and they have no consideration or care for anyone else. And it's like everybody climbing on top of everybody else to get to the top of that pyramid of power. You know, that's all going to change yeah. pretty soon here. Because the reign of Yahuwah is going nearer. Yes. And, well, you know, they're not, nobody's hearing about this in the uh, organized religion, you know. Uh, they, they just, you know, they, they don't know what the the uh, Besora really is. The message of the, the reign of Yahusha. When the kings of the earth assume their throne, they go and visit someone called the Pope, who is really the Pontifex Maximus, which means the high priest, or the, the, the most high priest. He has a title called Holy Father. Who would, who would that be? I mentioned it in this article. You know, that would be the, that would be Yahuwah, not, not a man, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the odd thing is, when Caligula assumed the throne of, uh, of Rome, he had that, one of the seven hills was where they buried their dead. It was called Vaticanus, 
Vaticanus means the habitation of dogs because dogs were digging up graves and eating the bodies of those that were dead. And underneath there, there's these, well, I guess passageways and the walls are lined with skulls, okay? Just skulls. And do you think that place would be uh, considered unclean? Like a giant graveyard above and below ground? And, uh, and that is the most unbelievably heinous place. And I, I'm sure in Yahuwah's eyes, because of all the, the carnage that went on there. And Caligula built a carnival there to make, and carnival means flesh raising, like goosebumps. And he would do things there that would just absolutely terrify people. And he called it a carnival. And, uh, These are things that the people, you know, in general have no idea about. They don't know. And if they, if they did know that their, their religion that mm. they follow stemmed from these type of people, mm. they would run away from it. Yeah. And they carry the same titles, uh, cardinals, the uh, the hinge people uh, that mm -hmm. assisted the the high priest Pontifex Maximus, who was the Caesar. That's where that title came from. And this article mentions that it uh, it is a an abomination. And uh, the title of Pontifex Maximus, who is the high priest? Yahusha. He's the only high priest we have. The high priest of the priesthood of the Levitical priesthood that was temporary and now is now obsolete, forever will be. It's a uh, animal blood deal that the priesthood had to offer, and uh, there was a high priest there. But that was just a figurehead, a model that was going to kind of a, 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 a temporary example of what Yahusha is. You know, mm -hmm. we're in the Melchizedek order. So is there anything that pops out of this that you were reading that we might want to share before the video ends? Well, um, it's just so all-encompassing. I mean, when you read this, I mean, you got to read the whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's a real eye-opener to people who follow um, religion and don't really look deeply into it because it's all, it's all in your face. I mean, all this stuff is you know, that's covered in this article. I mean, you can look around in the world and you can see it all. Yeah. And it, they're not trying to hide it anymore. It's in plain sight. But yeah. the thing is, is the people don't perceive it yet. And when that happens, there's going to be a great apostasia, in other words, falling away, when people finally perceive what this stuff really is and where it came from what it means. Yeah. And... It's going, to be, it's going to be something. He's going to destroy the pillars. Steeples, yep. pillars, domes, all that stuff. And uh, there's another article that you can get called Steeple People that explains some of the ideas behind this, too. And uh, it's strange fire. Definitely. Yahushua said, well, Yahushua said, Matt, worship him and follow after the way that he can. Don't learn their ways, yeah. That's right. Don't bring those Christmas trees into your house. Those are, you know, those are things that pagans did and they were adopted. Everything that pagans did were adopted. And if you eliminated everything that was, that Christians do from Sunday morning, worship services, to the steeples, to the bells, to anything, anything, uh, every festival that they operate with, Christmas, for example, or the bunny rabbit thing, uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, Valentine's Day, it's all about fertility, and it was all adopted from paganism and considered cleansed, and uh, it's unclean. You can't do that stuff. Yahushua never taught his first Nazarene to do that. No. Yeah. No. So how do we how do we uh, tell people uh, other than 
print something, hand them something, teach them the covenant. That's the first thing, the name and to live by it. And then, you know, share some videos, get them out there, because we're in the information age. There's no excuse. That's right. Yeah. Ask them for proof of who they worship. Yeah. There's physical evidence existing in the rocks, mm -hmm. like the Lost Luna Stone that I've got here behind me, you know. Oh, people might think that this thing's uh, different. Yeah, I didn't turn the light on back there. Let me go turn the light on, and I'll edit this part out. I wonder, <clears throat> I wonder if uh, anybody, I mean, if, if one thing happened that, that we were doing on this uh, video, or any one video or all the videos, the, the Ten Commandments written on, these, on this stone back here could be the turning point for somebody, you know? It could be, yeah. yeah. Having physical evidence, yeah. actually seeing the physical evidence. Yeah, the physical yeah. evidence is right there. All you have to do is go see it if you don't believe it. And they'll say, okay, that, that's an old rock. It's not faked. If it was faked, they wouldn't have, I mean, if it was a fake, then Hashatan would not have sent someone out there to destroy it. They, they were, uh, they did away with the first line or so of this, uh -huh. uh, so that, the, the, but they couldn't read it, so they didn't know they were, the name is still on there in several places, so. Well, you know, another thing, too, is um, if, uh, I mean, just, just pick a day, okay? Yeah. The day, the Sabbath day. <laughs> if that wasn't an issue, then why is there so much noise being made about it by the religious authorities? They don't talk anything about the, the sixth day or the fourth day of the week, but you start talking about the seventh, and you basically threaten yeah. and start keeping and observing the seventh day. And all of a sudden, you're a Judaizer, and you're yeah. an asthma and all that. So, you know, what are you if you keep the fourth day? You yeah. know, or the third day or whatever? Uh, no big deal. Uh, you do whatever you want, okay? Or worship every day, you know? Yeah, well, we, that's how you do it. You worship by obe obeying. The one that you that's serve right. is the one that you obey. The one that exactly. you don't obey is the one that you don't serve. The one that they're not serving is Yahuwah himself. I went to a museum in near Cincinnati, I believe it was, um, and <clears throat> they had this Noah's Ark display there, and I really was impressed with the amount of effort that was expended to, to reveal that this could have been real, and, it, and of course we believe it was, that, uh, that there was a destruction of the earth by water, and they have all this evidence and uh, as I was driving down the expressway, I could see where the dynamite had been removing entire hills, and I could see the stratification of the Noah's flood on both sides of the road. I mean, it's just, it was all laid down by water. And you can't deny that, you know. But anyway, in that display, I went into this one area where they were explaining the seven days of the week, creation creation week and we went through day one day two day three day four you know and the sun and moon were you know created the animals and men and uh, Adam was created and then you've got uh, you come up to the sixth day when uh, man was created and then the uh, exhibit stopped there was no seventh day mentioned why would that be? Why would they eliminate the sign of the everlasting covenant when they had the opportunity yeah. to just go and read scripture, reveal that the seventh day was the day that Yahuwah blessed. He blessed the birds, the fish, mankind, and the day. There's four yeah. things. It's funny how they seem to admit that. It's intentional. Oh, of course it is. Controversial. Yep. Because they're 
their Christianity rejects the word of Yahuwah. And yet they claim to live by it. They turn their back on it. If you, if you walk like Yahushua walked, that means obey exactly the same pattern in the seven festivals of the year. I mean, uh, Passover and First Fruits, Matzah, Shabuoth, and then the, the uh, seventh day, uh, seventh month um, appointments, Yom Teruah, Yom Kafar, and Sukkoth. They don't know what those words are. No. Yeah. They have no idea. It's the redemption plan. And uh, that's, that's the main thing that we're trying to teach people is his name and his word. Well, I mean, what else is there? You know, I, <laughs> I got an article. I don't know. I didn't send it to you yet. I sent you a package of, uh, last week or something. I think it was. But there's another article from one of these Christian organizations, and uh, they're talking about the key of knowledge. But I read the whole thing, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, totally missed it, totally. I mean, you know, right there, what's the key of knowledge? What's the key of knowledge? What did they say it was? Oh, it was, um, I forget, I'd have to go get the article. Yeah. Inside. But it's... Uh, Nothing about the name. Hmm. Nothing about the name. Yeah. It's like these, these these people, you know, they're all sincere and everything, and but they just totally missed it. Yeah. The key of, in case no one knows this, it's watching this. The, the key of knowledge is the name of Yahuwah. It's his name. They had withheld the name, and they'd replaced it with Adunai or Aduni. And then uh, in translations, Kyrios, Dominos, Dominus, and that translated into Lord from the King, uh, the, from the Latin Vulgate into the King James. So Lord is what the definition of the word means, but that's not what his name means. His name means, I was, I am, I will be. Now that's just the meaning of the name, but his name is four vowels called the Tetragrammaton. It's called uh, it, you pronounce it with vowels. It's Yahuwah. Just in case someone watching doesn't know. Mm -hmm. They withheld that name. And they would stone you for saying the name. Oh, they, yeah. they stoned Stephen for that in Acts 7 and 8, if you read about that. Well, now it's against the law to even say a... a uh mongrelization <laughs> of that of that name. Yeah. Like the, uh, the Catholic organization just passed a, a law in 2008, I think it was, that uh, forbid the use of, they call the name Yahweh, I think there's a W in it, um, in any form of prayer or song yeah. or liturgical uh, service. Yeah. So it's like, why, you know, and yet you read scripture, and it says throughout, call on my name. Yes. You know, and here you got the supposed, you know, um, representative of, of our creator here on earth. He calls himself wow. that, just like Caligula. <laughs> yeah, he thinks he's G-O-D on earth. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Caligula said. Yeah. That's right. But, you know, he, he's totally in opposition to what Scripture says. Right. And the people don't see it. Nope. They, uh, they don't study. Because you have to study to show yourself approved. I'm going to show them a picture of the name in the Hebrew. And the suffix at the end of the one on the second level is Yahusha. You've got Yahuwah on the top. Let me point to it. This is... This is Yahuwah, and it's read from our right to the left. So you start here, Yahuwah. And then down here is Yahusha. And, there, and I think it's clear enough for him to stop it and read those letters. So it's Yahusha. 
and that's a short form of the root yasha. Uh, yasha is uh, the root of sha, sha. It's shinayin. It's not a W, by the way. That's two teeth. That's what pictographic writing looks like. And this is the original script. And you remember what Yerusha said. He said, I come in my father's name. Yes. Okay, now I got a stupid question to ask people. How can J E S U S be in the name of G O D? Where is the connection? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm missing it here. Yeah, there's no connection. Yeah. There's none whatsoever. <laughs> well, they have to make it mean something else. They say, well, in order to maintain uh, the cognitive dissonance problem, uh, they they have to say, well, it doesn't mean literally a name. It means the authority of. Well, yeah, I've heard that argument too. That's that's that's, yeah, but that, that doesn't mean anything. That's, that's a logical fallacy. Yeah, he would have said it. He would have said, I came in the, my, my father's authority. But he said he right. came in his father's name, and you will not right. listen to me. If another comes in his own name, him you will believe and follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know, with, with some people with uh, circular reasoning. Pretzel logic, yeah. Well, logic. their minds will blow up. I mean, cognitive dissonance is a psychological mind distortion. And if you see truth and yet it doesn't it doesn't make sense because you've been taught something different and you have to reject it because it's just it's too much stress. That's what cognitive dissonance is. It's a stress that you have to work out or otherwise your your mind cannot properly operate in the real world. I think that's on one of those yeah. videos I sent to you. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's kind of like, um, you know, when a person knows the true name, um, and they listen and they hear all the Lord and G-O-D and J-E-S-U-S nonsense, it hurts their ears. Yeah. Because they're hearing cognitive dissonance when they go to these assemblies. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it, I mean, when you hear the name, you know, either, it's one and the same, it's either Yahuwah or Yahushua. Yeah. When you hear that name, it's very flowing, it's very simple, it's very all-encompassing. There's no question about it. But when you hear all these other ones and these, the planters and, you know, everything else, it's just it's noise. There's I got to I got to the point where I can't <laughs> can already listen to that stuff. Yeah, there was uh, something Yahusha said that you will not see me again until you say Baruch Haba Bashem Yahuwah. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Not the Lord. No. No, we're saying this. So we're about to see him and that, that, because he said we wouldn't see him again until we said that. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. starting to be pronounced. Yep. yep. Check that out at Ma Matthew or Matthew 23, verse 39. And he's quoting Psalm 118, 26, or referring to it, because the people were shouting that. They were saying Baruch Haba B'Shem Yehuah because they were quoting 118, Psalm 118, verse 26. That's right. How about all these people that are out there teaching people numerology? That if this Hebrew word has each letter adds up to something, then it must be related to other words that match that or have other mathematical equivalents. Is yeah, that divination? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's way out there. Yeah. That's more distraction. Yep. So if you see steeples, run away from that and run to Yahusha. And if you see people teaching stuff that's uh, 
something that only they discovered or they're passing around some kind of thing. There's this thing where they add up the, the well, they look at definitions of people in the scriptures linearly. They, they look at the word Adam and, and Seth and, and, they, and, they, and, and so on. They go all the way down, Melchizedek and, and, and Musha and all these names of these prophets and the lineage. And they make a sentence out of the definition of these words to make some kind of story appear. And it's, uh, it's just sad. Yeah. They've got to stop that nonsense. The That's written true. word is enough. You know, you don't have yeah, to start laying on little other cartoon action, you know. Well, that's like, um, you know, eisegesis. Eisegesis, You know, when you yeah. take an idea that you already believe and then go find scripture to prop it up. I mean, it's like yeah. proof text thing and all that. Oh, look what this means, you know. But they'll call it exegesis, but it's really something that they've already defined, and they have to hunt for the right definition of the word, and then make it work, you know, for their, you know, interpretation. It's not for private interpretation. It's no. just not to be done. You're, you're to look at what the Word itself is teaching you, and like you said, it needs to be exegesis. What is, is Yahuwah trying to tell us in that sentence and the sentences around it? You know, he's not trying to hide something. He's never sp spoken in secret. He says so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the sad thing is, is there's so many people out there that don't follow the advice of uh, Second Timothy three fifteen. Right. It, it, it's for it's for rebuking and teaching. The word is what it is. It's it's the whole body of scripture. Uh, but if the kings were to carry the covenant with them, the, the, you know, then we should too. You know, mm -hmm. we should carry them. We should. He, they had to write them. The king was ordered by Yahuwah to write this law down, this uh, these instructions down, the Torah, mm -hmm. and and then keep it with him and read it every day. And we're supposed to talk about it when we rise up, lie down, sit in our home, go along the walk along the road, go in and out, and. Uh, if we do that, we're going to do well. He said he promised us we would do well, yeah, because it would be in our heart and on our mouth, yeah. in our mouths, and in our children's mouths, and on our doorposts, and on our gates. That's what this is. This is a gate stone behind me. I turn the light on. Mm -hmm. Well, you know that uh, you're. Years ago, um, <clears throat> when the, the uh, people, the believers, were being uh, pursued by the authorities, the valley dwellers, I think they call them Waldensi, yeah. or uh, Pasadini, they used to hide little parchments of scripture in their garments, mm -hmm. and they were, they were secretive about it, and when they would come across someone who uh, was interested or asking questions and they would pull that out and they would they would show it to them. Keep it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that's not a bad plan. And it's basically the same thing with the uh, keeping the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. um, on our person because, you know, you can always whip it out and show somebody here. You know what? Yeah. You ever read these? Here's a simplified version of it. Mm -hmm. It's just most a, people mm -hmm. when you when you tell them, when you recite to them the Ten Commands that are written in plain English, not the King James, um, they've never heard them before. And there's a lot of people that I know in, in my small circle here that, that I've talked to that they've never heard things put in plain English. They've heard like King James English and they don't understand it because of the way it's, you know, the old English, the way it's spoken, and they didn't understand. They don't understand the meaning. Yeah. And um, sometimes, if you just put it plain and simple, I mean, I like.
easier to memorize those in that form. Yeah. And on the back of this uh, bigger one, we've got the uh, alphabets. I don't know if anybody wants to get any of these, and you can get them uh, at torazon.net, but it's the alphabets. You know, so you can learn what the letters look like. Most well, people, a lot of yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of teachers out there that are telling people, I guess there's this movement now where you can study Hebrew on the internet or whatever, but the thing is, is what they're teaching on the internet is not true Hebrew. And you got to be really careful with that stuff. And they're not going back to the original language. They're teaching Babylonian. Basically. Yeah, that's the script of our captors they brought back from Babel for the 70 years they lived there. That's actually Aramaic uh, script, Aramaic script. Right. That's not Hebrew right. letters that people are no. being taught with. This is uh, a very important thing to, to know. But then there's also a distorted script out there called, uh, I call it, the Hyksos hoax. And there was a, uh, there was a queen named H-A-T-O-H-O-R. H -H yeah, H-A-T-H-O-R, Egyptian yeah. deity of Turkey. Turquoise. Deity, yeah. yeah. And her mine was right next to their temple. They built the temple because it was close to the mine. And these okay. uh, Hyksos slaves that were, uh, you know, working the mine, they were actually enslaved people. They were illiterate. They couldn't read and write. And they weren't writing any words. They were just imitating words on the cave wall. I mean, not words, but letters that they were writing. They were seeing on, in the temple area. And they went into the cave, and they were fiddling around with the cave, and they were carving these letters they remembered seeing. But they didn't know what they meant. You know, they weren't writing words. They were just writing the letters that they'd seen. And they were hieroglyphics. That's what they are. They're hieroglyphics. And uh, now they're mixed into a lot of these things in books. And they're explaining pe to people that uh, <laughs> these symbols that they've mixed in are Hebrew. And that's not what they are. They're just, and, and they claim that this cave was the first evidence of, of human writing, the attempt to write. And, and that's not true. No. There's a lot of older stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But see, people that are, you know, unstudied. Yeah. They all fall for that. They'll buy it. Like, oh, it's because it's new. They've never heard it before. Yeah. Yeah, watch you out. Know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, what is that? The, the first estate is caused, seems right, until mm. another comes along and examines them. Yes. And then they've got you know, problems. Like, right. Because well, you, you, you have to track it to its source. And, mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, the truth is maligned and it's fallen in the streets. And it's so easy. But itching ears are all around us going, hey, I heard this thing. Uh, and I want to pass it around. And they're doing it. They're sending emails and sharing videos that are teaching lies all over the internet. And they're reaching the entire world. And the truth is maligned, but the lies are captivating and holding the attention of hundreds of thousands of people. Well, you know, it's like you said before, you know, we do live in the information age, yeah. but you've got to be careful with the disinformation that's mixed in. Right. Because there's a lot of that, too. Well, with the mind of Yahushua, we'll discern what is true, because he'll tell that's us. Right. And then we can repeat it. But... Uh, <clears throat> You can also kind of read a person by their spirit. Their, if they're, uh, you know, if they really have Yahusha, there's a patience, oh, you can tell. yeah, <laughs> and a calmness, yeah. and they're not on drugs, they're not drunk, and they're, they're they just. They don't look like they don't look like they just got up in the morning either. When I get up in the morning, I do look like that. I look like I just got up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I know what you mean. 
Yeah, the uh, you know but I mean. the people, their teachers out there, are walking up and down anxiously and ranting, and they're angry uh, at something. But that's a spirit that's in those people, and they uh, yeah. mm -hmm. they're fast talking, they're angry, their delivery is is evident that you that's not Yahusha talking, you know. That's right. But. Uh, his his little fro his little flock is weak and meek and not well listened to. You know the, the it's really it's really simple. All we have to do is just read his word, let him tell us what it is, and not go to somebody and ask them, but ask him that dwells in you. Now, if you haven't been immersed and called on his name for forgiveness of your crimes against his eternal covenant, then you're not ready because you've got to, first of all, say, I need help. And you don't run to a steeple to find it. They don't know. They're teaching you lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just uh, go to him and he'll, uh, he'll t tell you what this does for you. Th these commandments are, the, are your starting point. And your ending point, because he's probably going to whip those out, out of that ark. He's, he has. Revelation 11, it, it says, And the heavens were open, and I saw the ark of Elohim. Well, Yahushua has the ark. He's got the covenant that's inside the ark, which is even more important than the ark itself. And he's going to show it to us. But... Uh, we won't need it probably to see it because we'll all already know about it. But he says that it never will be spoken about again on the earth. You know, he says, no, no more will they ask about the Ark of Yahuwah. You know, that's right. Yep. If they, <laughs> and what are they yeah. talking about now? Or some of the people out there? We found the Ark. Yeah, yeah. I got a peek yeah. at it. I, I scraped some blood off of the side of it. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. And you didn't get, like, zapped like a mosquito? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Oh, well, you must be special. Uh, no, 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 that's not happened. No. <laughs> it wasn't the Ark. If, the, if they saw anything, it wasn't the Ark. No. No. Well, you know, I, they, they really want to believe in being a you know, so... Yeah. Well, they're taught by movies and they're taught by cartoons. If you were in Hinduism or, or Buddhism, uh, that's about all they use to teach you with is cartoons. Mm -hmm. You know, here's this and here's that, and they've got cartoons. Well, we've got solid rocks that you can go to, to as evidence of ancient believers that reached here in the North American area and they wrote it on their gate. They wrote the covenant. And the elders would sit around the gates of, of the cities and they would uh, wait for somebody to come to them with a problem or a question or train, need, needing help or training. And uh, they'd go to the elders and go, hey man, my neighbor, they, uh, they did this to me or they stole that or and the elders would go, hmm, let's, let's check the law. Let's check the instructions. And they'd turn mm -hmm. to the instructions, oh, look at that. That's, that's against this uh, covenant. You better tell your neighbor, or bring your neighbor here, and we're going to have to have a talk with him. And then they say, okay, you're going to have to give that back with a little extra, you know, because yep. you really upset somebody, you know. And if it is, is more serious, the person might have accidentally harmed somebody or killed them accidentally and the elders would have to go uh oh well we got to do something here so then they'd go to the scroll and they'd say well you've got to you've got to hide you're going to have to live in another place and if you ever come out of that place then this person's relatives is going to get you you know <laughs> i mean that's the way it was and yeah. but this never changes this is the eternal covenant we don't violate this but we have to know what it is. He winks, like in Acts 17, when Paul was talking to the Greeks. He said, oh wow, look at all these statues. I see that you all are very 
pious for something here. Uh, and uh, he said, well, I'm here to show you what's really going on. I see that I noticed while I was looking around at your idols, hey, one of these has a, a t some kind of dedication to an unknown mighty one. And I'd like to declare that unknown mighty one to you now. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was so cool. Yeah, but he well, winks at our ignorance. Yeah. Well, that winking is going to stop pretty soon. Well, going to be they're feeling you, you had enough time. You know. Yeah. Well, it's not surprising because he's going to have a reason. There's going to be one last thing that's going to happen. And he's going to say, look, I'm not going to tolerate it anymore. He's dealt with all these idols, pillars, false worship, ignoring his commandments, instructions of love, you know, not resting, not not willing to do it. And all these teachers and pastors and theologians or whatever they are, they're out there. And they're telling people, oh, it's okay. Uh, but he says that a man is not to lie with another man. Uh, that is an abomination. So they parade in the streets and say, oh boy, we get to do this. And everybody has to look and listen. Well, Sodom and Gomorrah are uh, witnesses to uh, the penalty for that. You know, Romans chapter mm -hmm. 1. Romans chapter 1 talks about this. And that's just yeah. one example. But the, the, the family unit is under attack. Marriage. Mm -hmm. And, and who, who is it that has the authority to marry a man and a woman? Some other man? Certainly no man. No. No. Can't be. Yahuwah no. brings a man and a woman together. And they become one flesh. And that, right. whoever stands there and, and claims authority in, Yuh in place of Yahuwah, they might have to answer for that to him. Yeah. They won't have to answer to a man, but they'll answer to him. Yeah. I've had people yeah. call me up and say, Hey, Lou, uh, we've seen your videos, we've read your books. Would you marry us? <laughs> what? How could they have read your books and seen your videos and ask you that question? They might as well invite me to their birthday party, too. I'm not going to come. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to come. Yeah, yeah. there's... Uh, I'm nobody. I'm just some guy. But uh, just like themselves. And kings are supposed to be... If you read Deuteronomy 17, where it says to write these commandments down and keep a copy with you and read it every day, Mr. King... Well, they're also to remember that they are no better than those that they rule over. They're not better than them. And they're not to treat people as if they're better. We're all the same. We're just brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Before his eyes, we're the, 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 uh, the servant of all is the greatest. And he's the greatest servant. So he's, okay. he's the greatest. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, there was a fighter, a prize fighter, that said, I am the greatest. Kind of like Maharaja, you know, that's what it means. Well, no, that's an abomination. You don't say that. You don't ever say, I am the greatest. You know? That's about when lightning comes <laughs> out of the clear blue sky. Yeah. 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 He's strong when we're weak. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. to be yep. submissive and not acting like we're better and looking at our skin and going, oh, look at that. I, I must be important. <laughs> no, Arabs are Hebrews. How can yeah. they not be? Right. They're descendants of Eber, Eberim. Eberim is the word. 
So their their language just didn't get fiddled with by the Karaite. Yeah. Well, the cut the they're cousins of a of uh, well, they're descendants of Abraham. So that means right. they're brothers of uh, Ishak. Ishak would be uh, a brother to Ishmael. And then you've got, uh, you know, other descendants and all this, all these other tribes that he blessed that went into another area of the world back in the day. And now the Arabs are actually having some kind of troubles with their bloodline because they've, they've been so inbred. But that's what the Hebrews really did look like because they're mm -hmm. descendants of Abraham and they're, uh, you know, but the, it's open to all races and, and languages and cultures and, you know, we're, we're learning his culture. So we're kind of like a cult because we're not occult, but that means right. hide or conceal. But a cult is a short word for culture. And the Nazarim are reappearing on the earth to restore the first Nazarim and their and and his, and Yahushua's teachings in us that were in them. That is a culture of obedience, and that obedience is written down in the covenant. So we have to be in covenant, and that makes us a cult. Yeah. But it isn't a bad cult. It's a yeah. it's a very good yeah. culture, and it's going to be the right. eternal culture too. Because when all this stuff burns and melts to, into a pile of rubble, uh, the culture that we are ambassadors of, uh, we're going to be uh, seeing restored to all the earth, and all the nations will have to, you know, observe the the festivals of Yahuwah. What is it? The book before Zechariah, uh, before Malachi. Zechari Zechariah, Ze Zechariah, they call him. It, it talks about yeah. going and, and after Yahushua returns and sets up his reign, they're going to go to the Jerusalem and observe the festival of Sukkoth, tabernacles in Latin. But uh, they'll be speaking Latin. Uh, they'll be speaking Hebrew, of course, at that point. You know, the resurrection. Yeah, if anybody doesn't go up and observe the feast of Sukkoth. Then starvation. Won't rain. Right. Starvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you hear about that in Christianity? You don't. They have to do a lot of skipping. Oh, let's skip over that. Let's let's skip way over this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all these corporations. Oh well, that that's a bunch of people who were pagans uh, we see uh, Paul trying to convert them to the walk in the Torah and he's uh, saying uh, hey uh, you were circumcised by Yahuwah Yahushua himself circumcised you mm -hmm. so uh, you know he was talking about circumcision in that but, right. uh, but I mean how could they talk how could they how could they talk about falling into their old habits of observing seasons and days and, you know, Sabbaths and stuff like that. They were pagan. Yeah, they didn't know anything about Sabbaths. They were no. being taught about Sabbaths, but they were falling back into their old pagan festivals because of the pressures of their relatives and their friends in that exactly. city. And they were already in that pattern. But Paul was teaching them the truth, and then they were getting resistance, and they were starting to get weak. And those things that Paul was talking about were weak and miserable principles. Right. Not, right the Sabbath it. isn't a weak and miserable principle. Yahushua yeah. wouldn't have said in Acts twenty, twenty Acts twenty four verse twenty that we should pray that our flight not be in winter or on a Shabbat in the last days. He's uh, referring Matthew. to this. Yahoo, yeah. yeah, Matthew Yahoo, chapter yeah. 24, verse 20. Right. So it's still here, and we're telling people about it because we're his his taught ones. We're the ones, the Nazarene, the branches of his teachings. Remember, he said, I am the vine. You are the Nazarene. We're not Christians. 
no. we're not Greek, uh, Greek or Roman thing. You can skip all the way over all that nonsense and all those sacraments and all those whatever they do. <laughs> it's yeah. it's yeah. all nonsense. I it's simple. It's But we're uh, we're really happy to be here to tell people, for the little time that we have, to do this, mm -hmm. to look into the scriptures, and go by them, and then you'll be okay. You know. Right. Is there anything you want to read out of this, uh, just briefly, out of this mm. new new track? Well. Um. The thing that just looks right at you is when you open the second page is um, the, the delusion for sure. It says Pope of Rome claims to be a G.O.D. claiming all authority over the spiritual and physical realms. This delusional idea was developed from several circus dogmas, among which are, number one, papal infallibility, number two, apostolic number three, papal indulgences. Mm. So, you know, that, um, that is definitely a delusion. There can be only one Kodesh Abba. Yeah. And it certainly isn't the Pope. No, it can't be. Why do these presidents yeah. go and see him? The presidents go and see their patriarch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he he occupies the chair or the position of the man of sin, and um, you know when he speaks, he speaks from his uh, spirit. To him, which is the dragon. Yeah. Definitely not Yahuwah. Because if he were, he would be telling us to keep his name and call on his name. He'd be teaching his name if he was from Yahuwah. He wouldn't be wearing that silly hat. Yeah. Hats are real important to people. Yeah, they are. I had somebody write me a letter from a prison, uh, and I sent him back a copy of the commandments. And uh, anyway, he had asked me, "Hey, I need to find some way of getting a kippa and a prayer shawl." And uh -oh. I was like, "Where's a <laughs> kippa?" Is a Hebrew word for dome. What? What's that? What do you mean dome? Well. And uh, prayer shawl, what is that, you know? Yeah. Where is that at? Next what? thing we look for some longer to fill in. Oh. To wrap around his wrist and his uh, finger and his hand. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we wear a uh, little thread, but uh, we... Uh, we don't have to wrap yeah, up our peace. arms. Peace, peace. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah. As long as we're not in competition with one another. That's right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah, if you uh, if you have a long seat seat. A uh, seat seat is uh, a word that means blossom. And uh, Yahusha walked up to a fig tree and was looking for fruit. He was looking for the, at least where the blo where the blossom would be would be where the fruit would be. It wasn't time for fruit though. But he didn't see any evidence that there would ever be fruit on this fig tree. So he mm -hmm. cursed it right in front of his Talmudim, his, his Nazarene. Yep. And it withered practically right before their eyes. Dried it up. They passed by at a few minutes later, or within hours anyway, and it was completely withered. It had probably turned black. 
but uh, it was just it was a rotten mess after he cursed it. Mm -hmm. But the seat seeth that we wear are to remind us of the Torah and the instru the instructions that we are to live by every day. And when we look at upon that, we remember to obey them. That's what they're for. We're not better because we wear them. We wear we wear them because we obey. Right. And that's yeah. it. And they're short. They're not long. You know, if we were in a hot air balloon like you've been in before in some of these videos, uh, <laughs> they wouldn't be able to use those to grab you. No. It'd be too short. No. Yeah. I'm wondering, um, is there anything that we're going to miss out on if we if we were to stop it now? Is there some ending that we could put on it like? Uh, Button it up. Hmm. Well, I think we covered most of it. I mean, I think that the main thrust of it was uh, this um, uh, the obelisk, Caligula obelisk, and, and all the pillars that are up all <laughs> over the world. And yeah, in the graveyard. Of, yeah, steeples on top of surface buildings. And, yeah. You know, that, that stuff. Um, that's not a good thing, you know? No. And the biggest obelisk of all is in Washington, D.C. It's yeah. like 555 feet high. It's the biggest obelisk that ever existed. Yep. Yep. And it's exactly like the Egyptian pillars dedicated to the sun deity in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So don't do that. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. And... Uh, Dan and I are going to see you in about a month, and I hope you share this video. So like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.